right guys, so today, once again, it is meat day. I divided up um, the chicken into, well, there was two Cornish hen, and um, I wrapped their dinner up in their bowl and put it back in the fridge, but right now, this is their breakfast. Yeah, so there's kidney and chicken parts. And then the other, for breakfast, or for dinner, they're gonna have um, liver and the, other, the rest of the chicken with some turkey necks. All right guys, so this is it. Dogs do eat raw. I wonder what wild dogs eat in the wild. They definitely do not eat kibble. So today's gonna be a meat day type of video, but um, I also just wanna educate you guys on, you know, why we're feeding raw meat, as well as, you know, what's really going on behind the animal uh, food industry, pet food industry, so that you guys understand why we feed meat and do the rotations um, of food day that we do. So I hope that you guys enjoy. Remember to click like, subscribe, and comment um, to support the boys. They love your support. Um, P.S. Prince Han is getting better um, after the German Shepherd bit his finger um, about two weeks ago. He finally was able to take the splint off his hand and he's doing much better. He's using, bo he's using both of his hands right now. So he's just, he's kind of sleepy. <laughs> this is Cookie. She's also very sleepy. And here's King looking handsome and gorgeous as ever. And then right here we have Star laying right underneath the dining table because he just likes to lay here and enjoy himself catch some food when it falls off the table, you know? Anyways, let's just get started. We're gonna give Star his, uh, I think this is kidney. Star, Star, come here. Good job, buddy. Okay, guys, so I just wanted to tell you a story that changed our life and the way that we feed our boys forever. Now, when Prince was a few months old, he ended up having a few random accidents, such as peeing on the bed and not being able to hold in his pee. We assumed that he may have had an infection uh, due to drinking water from a pond at the dog park that we went to, and honestly, it just turned out to be true. However, the vets wanted to do extra exams on him to test to see if he had other problems. Uh, we ended up agreeing to a few tests, which cost over $1,000, which is completely fine as long as my prince is healthy and they ended up diagnosing him with advanced liver failure and highly recommended forcefully to get him on a special kibble diet that would help him through this disease they say that this disease cannot be cured and that he will always have to be on this kibble for the rest of his life turns out that was actually false and he was healthy as can be besides the urinary tract infection he got from drinking dirty water from the pond why did the story change our life? Well, it's because we realized that commercially processed dog food was a job security for veterinarians. How do vets make money? Obviously from sick dogs. This is because vets are trained by a system that makes money from sick animals. If all animals were healthy, vets probably wouldn't be making as much profit as they do from unhealthy animals. Vets may be unaware of the system as well as the lies and deceit behind the pet food industry, but it's still a form of job security for them in the end. Have you ever been to the vet and the vets have strong opinions in giving antibiotics or certain brands of kibble? It's because they are supporter of that brand and a supporter of a system that profits when your dog is sick even though they may not be aware of it. Vets are unaware of the system, mostly, most vets I would assume. Um, they're unaware of how the pet food industry processes dog food, unaware of true nutritional needs of dogs for the most part, which is why they recommend kibble. Because if vets were truly informed and educated about dog nutritional needs, they most likely would not recommend kibble whatsoever. But because they are unaware, our dog ends up being sick based on their recommendations and suggestions. So how can dogs that regularly get checkups from vets end up getting more sick? Is it due to chemicals being injected into their bodies that are unnatural to their system, as well as food recommendations that are unequipped to satisfy the nutritional needs of a dog's body? Yes, pretty sure that is it. There's have been research and studies showing that chemicals and vaccines being injected to dogs actually causes long-term health problems, which is why 
um, vets have recently noticed that that was the cause, and now they're you know reducing or declining the amount of shots and vaccines being put into an animal's body. So, pom pom fam, today we break through the ice and spill some truths behind the pet food industry and explain to you why raw meat is the path. We all should do our own due diligence to provide what's best for our dogs. Take this information as you will and feel into how this information makes you feel. You may be wondering what makes kibble so bad. The meat in pet food mainly consists of rendered animals, which is another term for leftover animal parts that are inedible for humans. You see, animal meat industry is meant to make profit. That's all it is. The edible parts of an animal goes to the people and ends up in the market to sell for people at grocery stores. What do they do with the leftover animal waste that people can't eat? Obviously, they're not gonna throw it away because it's just a waste to throw away waste for them, right? So obviously they have to try to make profit somehow. So someone's got to think of a smart idea to profit instead of throwing away waste, right? Well, whatever is inedible from the animal goes to our dogs, such as tumors, cysts, diseased animals, euthanized animals, organs gone bad, etc. that cannot be eaten by people. To cover up the smell of these diseased organs and animals, the pet food industry have to figure out how to make dogs eat these food without turning their noses away. Because if the dogs turn their noses away, then people won't buy these products for the dogs, which in turn means that there will be no profit in the end. So they scheme us and our dogs by covering kibble with a cooked fat based liquid that is extracted from processed and rendered animals or overused grease from restaurants. Imagine how these strong chemicals interact with our dog's body. It's probably not the best idea. Whether a dog food is labeled grain free or no meat byproducts or the like, it doesn't matter. In the end, kibble is still overly processed and produced by a system that aims to profit instead of promoting our dog's health. So let's be real now. There are deceitful names for certain ingredients in the ingredients for dog food that people can't read and they're not even aware of what these ingredients even mean. Another story that also changed the way I see vets and how they operate, um, I will tell you in just a minute. Honestly, this isn't a video about shooting down vets and making them the bad guy. It's just because they are unaware of what's really happening in the pet food market. They're just here to make a living while being sabotaged to believe that recommending kibble is a lifesaver for dogs. In the end, our responsibility to our animals lies within our hands, not the vets. No one cares about our animals more than we do, so we need to do our own due diligence to consistently improve our dog's health and life, especially through something as important as diet. This other story I mentioned recently occurred two weeks ago. You may have heard about this in our other videos previously, but uh, just for a deeper story on what happened and how this honestly changed the way that we see vets and how they operate was when Prince recently got his hand bitten by a German Shepherd, which created multiple deep wounds on his paws. Blood was squirting everywhere on his paws and his paws laid limp. As the German Shepherd was biting his hand, I was trying to hold his limb together so that the German Shepherd wouldn't have ripped his arm socket off or arm out of his arm socket, but I could not hold it tight enough because the German Shepherd was too strong. But what ended up happening was that the German Shepherd did let go and as blood was squirting from his paws, we rushed him to the hospital, the animal pet hospital because I wanted to get an x-ray of his paws to make sure that he was okay and that nothing was broken. Well, after getting the x-ray at the vet, it turned out that, yes, his bone was fractured. The vet highly recommended antibiotics to get rid of any infection or inflammation that was occurring. The assistant looked me dead in the eyes and said, if you don't give him these antibiotics, he will die. It's the best way I can put it, he will die. And she said that because in the beginning she asked me, um, you know, like how do I treat, how do I give him vaccines and all that stuff. And I said, I work with a holistic vet. And then the assistant said, holistic doesn't work. 
So after that, I'm pretty sure we were. She was not fond of me because I was working with a holistic vet and not like a modern vet, I guess, like a traditional vet. Uh, so that's what she said. My prince will die if he doesn't take that antibiotics. But I was wondering if she knew what antibiotics actually does to the body because wasn't medicine created to treat symptoms and not the main cause? And also, antibiotics tend to backfire, even in people. We heard stories over and over again about how people take antibiotics, it cured their symptoms, but later it backfired and the symptoms came back worse. And there's more information about this, about bacteria, germs, and viruses, and about the reason why there's bacteria when there are, you know, like wounds or injured areas. So um, I will link more information about that in the description below so always always check the description to make sure you get the resources that we mentioned in our videos moreover i had to make a brave decision between whether to follow the vet's strong recommendation of giving antibiotics or believe in my own research that antibiotics is actually what stops the healing process in our dogs because it's chemicals it's drugs that basically just distract the healing process instead of cure the root cause of the problem. And I chose to go with my gut and did not give antibiotics. I had four days to make sure Prince no longer had an infection and dramatically reduce inflammation before the next pet visit or vet visit. So during those three days before the pet visit, I gave Prince a watermelon in the morning, then fasted him for the rest of the day. I did that for two days. Third day, he ate watermelon in the morning, then a sweet potato mixed quinoa at evening time. On the fourth day, this is the checkup day. Was Prince hand getting better or did I end up making a big mistake by not giving the antibiotics? Is his life at risk? And is he actually on the verge of death? Those are very scary questions to be asking yourself when you're waiting at the vet's office and anxiously praying and hoping that you made the right decision for your dogs. So they brought him in, checked his hand, and brought him out to me with a splint on his arm. If you guys don't know what a splint is, it's kind of similar to a cast. With cast, you can take it off, but with splints, you have to keep it on until the next vet visit. So the vet asked me if I gave him anti antibiotics and I threw up a big lie saying yes because I didn't want the no to affect the way that they were gonna give me information about his hand. The vet said that his hand was doing much better and to my relief, diet allowed his body to naturally heal without medication. That would have stopped the healing process and create more burden and toxin for the body if I was to give him the antibiotics that the vet prescribed. Yes, medication and drugs may have stopped symptoms in the body, but we must remember that what comes in must come out. Medications and drugs are stored in the body for long periods if the body isn't in the right condition and circumstance to heal, which goes for dog food as well. The longer you feed kibble to your dogs, the more toxin will have been built up and the more your dog's body will suffer in the long run. Dogs are meant to eat meat. It's what their body was designed to eat biologically, which is why raw meat is so important to their diet. The secreting organs like kidney and liver, as well as the brain, lungs, heart, and gizzard. In the wild, dogs are scavengers, so they will go hunting, but they do not hunt every day. Sometimes they go weeks without meat and are in perfect condition. This is because as scavengers, they will feed on fruits to fill their bellies. Dogs don't only eat meat, they scavenge for fruits and berries as well. These type of flight fruit days allow their body to heal and detox. Meat days are heavy and dense, which requires more effort and energy from the body to digest. That's why they end up having periods in between meat days where it's scavenging for light fruits so that their body can restore and repair. To be honest, I haven't seen my dogs have better poop since getting them on raw meat and fruit days. The loss of unnecessary fat on their bellies was a bonus, but their energy was also up. Their body is beginning a healing and detoxing period and their appetite has also been on point. I used to feed raw meat every day thinking that they must have meat to be healthy all the time. 
you know, um, BARF, the, I don't, I don't really know, like, what it stands for, but BARF is basically calculating all the meat and organs, but it's mainly just meat, and honestly, dogs don't be calculating meat and percentages in the wild, they just eat um, intuitively, and whenever they feel like stopping, whenever they feel like they have enough, then they just stop. But the truth is they don't eat meat every day and it's too much dense food for their body, which makes their body have to constantly work to digest and in turn that prevents them from allowing their body to heal. I also began to realize that my dogs began getting picky with meat and denied certain meat on some days when I always gave them meat. It turned out their body have had enough of meat and it needs to detox and heal, which is why my dogs didn't eat sometimes. But now that's no longer an issue since we don't feed meat every single day. Since going to the vet for Prince checkup, he is in perfect condition, perfect health besides his fractured hand. And it's all due to what we put into their body or what our dogs eat. Have you ever heard the quote like, you are what you eat? Honestly, I don't even know if anything is more true than that because that quote is solid wisdom. Anyways, I hope that you guys learned something new today and don't take everything as solid wisdom from vets in a system that profits when dogs are sick. Do your own research, learn and grow for your dogs and your dogs will appreciate you for your effort. Look in the description in the video um, because we consistently update our information. Always refer to the most recent videos for accurate information but check the description because the description is key. What we feed last year or two years ago is not what we feed now because when we do our research consistently, we find new information. We trust our gut and follow what we believe will be best for our dogs. So yes, guys, thank you for watching. Um, we love you. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe what you think of this video. Remember, this isn't a video about bashing vets. It's just a video about the truth that we all should know as dog companions, companions for our dogs. Thank you for watching. I'm going to be quiet now. Um, I'll see you guys in the next video next Thursday. Love you guys. And the pom-pom boys love you as well. See you.